Famous YouTuber Mummyman5 here. So my Velma vid got a lot more views than I was expecting. As in, it got more than zero. I was seriously expecting nothing. That's what my experience had been like on this platform for a while now. So you know what that means? I gotta milk it for the few droplets of attention I can get. I'm starving, baby. I'm addicted now. I'm thirsty for it. I'm a whore. I gotta find something similar to make a video on as soon as possible. Unfortunately, there's not a single damn thing I care about anymore. Just in general, I don't care about anything. I'm stone cold. What, do you want me to talk about some popular relevant topic of the week? Don't have enough people doing that on this rotting platform? Can't get enough, can you, you sluts? I think we can all agree that there's a particular class of people in society who are contributing the most to ruining the world right now. You know who I'm talking about. YouTubers. I hate these guys. They're always making video essays, crapping all over other people's genuine expression of creativity from their ivory towers, punching down on the fragile feelings of the innocent celebrities and giant corporate conglomerates. I think it's time someone takes them down a notch. In my last thing, I kept mentioning the absolute onslaught of videos that were uploaded about this show throughout January. You remember the show, right? The one with the fixed Scooby-Doo characters? Well, I thought of a cute idea. What if I chuck those sons of bitches into a rating system, or even tier list, and call that content? This is kinda risky. You know, talking shit about other creators for no reason. Many of whose fans would probably be the ones to come across this video. You know, that might be a bad idea. Like, what gives me the right to be so judgmental on other people? <laughs> yeah. I hope it goes without saying, I'm not being serious with about 90% of what I'm about to say. I'm just obnoxious, and I enjoy being an asshole for no reason. This was originally supposed to be a segment in the original video, but I got lazy and I didn't want to have to keep editing that thing. So basically, I'm recycling a scrapped idea in a desperate attempt to emulate what got me some views. Hell yeah, baby. And before this one gets no views. <laughs> This guy's pretty obscure. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's called Penguin Man Zero or something? I don't know, sounds goofy. This video of his has significantly less guns in it, which is disappointing. Despite being such a mainstream macro e-celebrity, I sadly must admit there ain't much to say about this one. It's fine. I mean, the guy posts, like, every other day about every other thing that can be talked about. So it makes sense that a subject as lame as Velma wouldn't necessarily amount to a banger. It's going in C, cause it sucks. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's not like bad or anything. In fact, none of these videos are bad per se, so any of them going low on the list is just relative and is more like just meh at worst. Disparo. First of all, I respect how much he reuses the same few images of Elma's face, even when it's completely irrelevant. I respect the hustle. The only people to blame here are the viewers for apparently clicking on anything with Velma's god-awful face on it. Yeah, you. I'm calling you out. Y'all really click on shit like this? Disgusting. I only I watched one of these because I'm lazy, but it was actually kind of good. Despite the apparent redundancy of reviewing every single episode for 20 minutes, he's able to keep the commentary witty and unique. I like the Funko Pops in the background too. You can't be a media review channel without Funko Pops in the background. It's something I'm gonna have to do lest I be punished via castration and waterboarded with soy milk. It's almost as bad as the fact that he's British. This one is actually going all the way to A, cause it's actually a little funny. I'm being facetious, but it does have an apparent amount of effort put in, comedically and production-wise. And well, I just liked it more, which is the end-all be-all here. I'm jealous of this dude. To be able to just read out a relatively short review of something, with somewhat random b-roll in the background, and actually keep people's interest is kind of impressive. Then again, I couldn't imagine watching a bunch of crap I don't like just for content. I mean, on a regular basis. Something I want to touch on, although I would hate to touch Velma, is this whole vibe of hatefulness a lot of people seem to have picked up on from this show. While I guess I agree, I don't think it's something that stood out to me because it doesn't really surprise me. This is kind of just the current Gen Z slash millennial vibe in general. It's the same kind of vibe I get when encountering a lot of popular tweets I see from those generations. Just this brimming narcissism and resentment and wannabe intellectualizing. This ain't the first time we've seen this and it won't be the last. This is about as straightforward of a review as you can ask 
for. Nothing particularly unique or flashy, but there's nothing wrong with it either. That's why it's going in C. It just didn't particularly stand out to me. The Little Platoon. Those videos are not very little. <laughs> it had only been about a week and people were already doing hour-long deep dives into this shit. Oh god, man, I'm sorry for you, dude. I don't know why you would do that to yourself, but I'm praying for your swift recovery. This is almost like an elongated version of the critical drinker type vid, where it's mostly dry analysis of the thing, with humorous remarks scattered about to keep it entertaining. Though this is obviously much more in-depth, whereas drinkers was more like a summary. I need constant smug remarks, try-hard edginess, and pseudo-comedic rambles that barely constitute as commentary or else it basically sucks. So for that reason, and because I don't know why, this one goes one tier above, cause it's kind of on the dry side for my childish ADHD tastes. EFAP didn't really review the show as much as just reacted to it, said reactions consisting mostly of just which is pretty relatable. I even tried recording live commentary myself, thinking I might actually use it somehow. However, it ended up being made mostly of dead silence. So I give this review a S. It perfectly encapsulates everything you need to know about this show. My favorite part with this one was when old Steve here called Velma a winka. It's hard to say with this one, cause I think I like it more than the ones in C, but not quite enough to be in B. I'll just say C, but it's on the higher end of fine for me. Alpha J Show does the unthinkable, and actually honest to god analyzes the overarching plot of this show, breaking down particular elements of the story, commenting on each. He also proves systematically and empirically that Velma is an idiot, and just kind that accidentally stumbles her way through the story. As far as these videos go, this one's pretty good. It actually contributes a little to the general topic by analyzing it a bit more closely. It's questionable just how much value that has though, since I think there's a reason nobody bothers to seriously dissect this show. I don't think anyone is ready to be that intimate with the show. You don't need to go that far to know that it sucks. He kinda earned a high rating for actually analyzing it, being able to condense that analysis and keep production value high. Oh, Valsky bum. I know this guy. He's still around? I remember him from when he was doing Gravity Falls theories without commentary, just using text and red circles in MS Paint. Good shit. Man, those were the days. I was a legitimate viewer of this guy. The Mabel's secret twin theory was my favorite bullshit one. Props to this guy for sticking around this long. His thing these days seems to be very teensy-weensy, usually cartoon-related news and review type stuff. And that's what he did for Velma. It's three minutes long and only half of it is an actual review. If you think he manages to pack in mind-blowing content in those three minutes, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's pretty bog standard. This is the first one going as low as D. And again, it's nothing against you, man. I just don't know what else to put in it. Cartoon Man. Probably THE cartoon review PNG tuber. You know shit's serious when the YouTuber's cartoon avatar gets angry. Eh, I don't know. C? I'm putting a lot of things in C, but I don't know. That's usually what happens with tier lists anyway. Anyway, it's hard to have strong opinions on most things. Putrid, vile, cringe. That should be the new Turkey Tom thumbnail format. Unfortunately, I think they changed that thumbnail since I last screen capped it. Now it's Fred's is evil because he's white? Which I guess is more clickable, I don't know. You probably know this sword guy, Sword Man. He talks about swords and stuff on his channel, it's pretty cool. Apparently he's part of this podcast, something I didn't know until just now. Annoyingly though, despite being in many of their videos, Shad in particular is not in any of the Velma ones. Just to fucking spite me. This is kinda just an off the cuff thing. Three dudes sitting and talking about what they just witnessed, consoling each other in their trauma. As such, it's not the most interesting or unique commentary ever, and there's nothing crazy going on entertainment wise. You know where I'm going with this, it's another C one. Jay Longbone, one of the few somewhat funny women online, and someone one I've been confusingly compared to, oddly enough. I don't see the resemblance. This one is an edited live commentary she did with her friends, which I think she does often. I really liked the ones on Gotham High. However, this one's not as entertaining to me. I think it's hard to be entertaining with this show as your material. There's just fucking nothing to comment on. This one goes lower on the list cause I don't fucking know. There's no real standards here. Put it in the fucking Baba Booey tier. This is
This thumbnail has such a menacing energy. Its threatening aura intimidates me. This one I recommend you simply watch without any preface. It's only seconds long. Basically, it's pretty good. One of the rare A moments. Next up is none other than Mayoshi and Twitter's favorite pink anime rabbit, Pippa of the Pipkin. <laughs> Yet another not a review, but a 3 hour livestream just kind of riffing about it and no I am not going over the entire 3 hours. I bring this one up mostly because I feel bad for stealing the idea for this entire video from it. Basically this one gets an S. I am absolutely biased. Mr. Enter unfortunately did not do a review. Ah, This can't really go on the tier list since it doesn't exist, but if it did, y'all know it would have been S tier. Last but absolutely not least, thank god Doug Walker threw his weird hat into the ring. There ain't much to say about this video though unfortunately, other than that Doug Walker looks like he's on fucking crack in 1.5 times speed. It's one of them off the cuff, unscripted rants basically, and as such it's about twice as long as it probably could have been. S tier- nah I'm just kidding. Okay, I don't even need to explain why I'm putting this in SS tier, mind Buddha. I don't know if you know this, but there's some idiot called Mummy Man 5 who apparently thought it necessary to share his super important, unique opinions on this stupid trend. Well, I don't think I have to tell you, it's clearly Z. It's the worst ever. Nay, it's the worst possible. Okay, enough of this crap. So anyway, that was the Velma video tier list. Completely bullshit and a waste of your time. You fool! You've allowed me to steal minutes away from your life with nothing gained. You will never get those precious seconds back. <laughs> yeah. Now we're off to the IMDB reviews. Let's see what the experts think. Ah yes, of course. Velma has finally solved her mystery case. This one is in the running for my favorite because it sounds like it was written by an AI and it's hilarious. The best Velma show in 2023 history. Yeah, you know, that's probably true. I don't know if I can rate it any lower than the other Velma shows in all of 2023. I finally get to see Velma having her own show. Dot. Solving mysteries on who cut the girl's brains out. Dot. Fred just being a obsessed person who doesn't know how to cut his own meals. Nor Marvel posting about blogs is absolutely awesome. I just, I don't know, I find this funny. The strange robot way in which it's written, the goofy grammar and random capitalizations, and how I can't tell if it's serious or not. And Daphne, I hope she and Velma spend the rest of the, their lives together. Much like the rating this guy gave the show, so too does this review get a 10 out of 10 from me. Already. Despite getting the conclusion completely wrong, I find this generally adorable. It's not bad, but it's not good either. Oh boy, we got a fence sitter everybody. I get that why people are so mad and salty about Velma being adult animated, judging that Velma is from the family-friendly Scooby-Doo franchise, and I have to agree with them, but that's not the case here. You agree with why people are mad, but that's not the case? What? This one's getting a bad but not good either. Out of 10. Uh, for getting the headline only half right, not even a 6 out of 10, like you gave this show, which by the way means it's on the positive side, which means you liked it more than you didn't, which is insane. Yeah, I bet you like that fence up your ass, don't you? You funny and made for adults. You're really reaching for compliments when you highlight the simple fact that it's made for adults. As if I could even believe that. I don't know if I want to meet the kind of person who would find this show funny, no offense. Imagine the smell. Characters are very nice and eye-catching. Well, I guess they sure are eye-catching. People keep asking for same old school animations, which is not funny and boring in many ways. See, there's ways to do something different within an established franchise without changing too much of what people like. Once you change too much, it kind of defeats the purpose of even making it a part of that franchise, other than marketing. If you want something so different, then that's what creating something original is for. I think. If you want to claim something is a part of an established franchise, then you have an inherent responsibility to make it in line with what came before. Scooby-Doo needed something refreshing like Vilam, and hopefully people are ready to accept it this way. Ominous ellipses. Scoobert didn't need this man. Don't be so mean to the poor pupper. He didn't deserve this. I mean, what do you think this is gonna be? He disagrees with me, which means it's getting a low rating, bitch. Yeah, that's right. I actually liked it. Oh my god. The characters are a little weird, but not that hard to swallow. You swallowed who now? 
Oh my. I gotta give credit on the hallucination parts. They really were scary. I'd really like to know how old you are if those were scary. I don't even know if those were supposed to be all that scary to the audience. I don't know, this one gets a baba booey out of 10. Four millennials, but still funny. I like how you put the butt there, as if four millennials and funny are contradictory. Very appropriate. Loved it like I love human resources and big mouth. Okay, I see. Just for that, you're going straight to the bottom, buddy. Zoinks! First of all, zoinks? You did it wrong, asshole. It's jinkies. I was the first one to do that, by the way. Using jinkies at the beginning of my review. No one else did that. I claim that as my joke. The rest of this review is rather bland, no offense. It summarizes the major comments most people have. It's whatever. You get a high score for being right, though. Worse than people say. I heard how bad this was, so had to see for myself. You did not need to see this for yourself. You really can get everything you need to know by seeing reviews. I was expecting to be laughing at how atrocious it was, but it's not even bad enough to laugh at. Yeah, by no means is it funny bad. It's just boring. It's not worth the damage to your mental health. How the hell did this get made? It's abysmal on every level. I don't know where you've been the last several years, but abysmal shit gets made all the time. Every single person involved with greenlighting and creating this show deserves to never work again. Well, I wouldn't say that. You gotta wonder, though, what people like the animators were thinking when working on it. Some of them kinda put actual effort into it, too. I wonder how soul-crushing it might be to know something is bad, but you have to work on it for potentially a year or even more. That's why I think I'd never wanna actually work in the mainstream creative industry, even if I could. Calm down, boomers. Okay, strap in, boys. I saved the best one for last. It's a bit of a migraine. We're up for some real Twitter energy here. I think this has since been deleted, which is why I don't have a high quality screen cap of it. There's a lot of crying here about wokeness. They put bad language in my favorite show from 50 years ago. Wah. But millennials are the snowflakes. You're all in your 60s. Grow up. I don't think too many people are like huge fans of this franchise, in the same way one would be of Star Wars or something. Scooby-Doo itself is just kind of fine. It's simple, charming, and effective children's entertainment, and it's just regurgitated infinitely for easy money. It's remembered and referenced because of its iconic status and its peculiar immortality, not necessarily because there's a sizable, dedicated fanbase or anything. So to take something like that and use it as essential Essentially just an aesthetic for your amateur adult swim cartoon it is just plain weird. The straw man of the nerdy neckbeard spurging at the mere presence of diversity doesn't quite apply here. If a cartoon boob gives you heart palpitations, then give up the HBO and get Disney Plus. Well, I'll have you know, I didn't watch this on HBO, nor do I have Disney Plus. I actually found it on this handy, lesser known streaming service called the Pirate Bay. The only cost is your computer computer's RAM for mining Bitcoin and your personal information sent to the FBI so they can kidnap you and make you into a sleeper agent and then wipe your memories of any of it ever happening. At least that's what happened to me. Also, I don't think there were any actual boobs shown in their entirety. They actually chicken out on having full-blown nudity for some reason. Despite having no qualms about gratuitous gore, I would say it's because they're minors, but then why even have them in these situations to begin with? The voice actors are great. I actually didn't notice the voice acting at all. I guess I guess it's surfaceable. Fred's voice is annoying, but it's obviously supposed to be that way, so that might not be the fault of the actor. I don't know why you'd go out of your way to call it great, though. There's no standout moments or anything. The small dick jokes are on point. What the fuck are you even talking about? Small dick jokes might be the single kind of easy degenerate humor this show manages to restrain itself from indulging in. I can't think of a single one, let alone plural. It's very funny, but if you still think the original is peak comedic excellence, you're going to hate it. Yeah, I don't know if there's a single person on Earth who thinks the original Scooby-Doo is peak comedic excellence. It's not like it was even trying to be. It almost is, though, if you compare it to this show. I guess you all missed the stoner in the original. I think that whole Shaggy being a stoner thing is way overblown. The only way in which Shaggy is actually implied to be a stoner is simply by nature of him being a hippie archetype, and hippies in real life often got stoned, especially during peak boomer era. There might be one or two specific references in one of the original shows, but forgive me for not going full billiam and actually watching 
doing all that shit. I'm kind of sick of the whole Shaggy is a stoner meme. And the fact that it's used to justify stupid shit like this makes me kind of hate it. Man, after all that spurging, they didn't even give it a 10. Well, I'll give it a 10. I don't know, it's got passion. <laughs> I've successfully wasted 20 minutes of your life with a complete garbage idea that sounded funny on paper but in practice was kind of weird and that I procrastinated heavily on and now it's fucking April and I even missed April Fools. God damn it. Now the Mario movie is out and everyone's talking about that, officially burying this decrepit horse carcass of a topic, hopefully. No matter what happens, I'll probably be posting things throughout the year. If nothing else, then out of curiosity to see what happens happens. Maybe I'll even talk about the Chris Pratt movie, I don't know. I'm very curious about that shit. And I cannot wait to watch the Barbie movie, holy shit! That's gonna be epic! Ken is literally me. 